higher. Uh, I think the need to understand that is it a good fit based on his family requirements or based on his plans of uh, expansion, is this working? Uh, so that's when I think an architect or an interior designer comes in. Just get clarity, a complete clarity in terms of how you are going to use this house for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, once you're clear about that, I think it's very important to probably go when you're starting for these properties to see if these things are fitting into your requirement. Hi everyone, welcome back to another insightful episode in our Connect with Experts initiative. I'm Ashish Acharya, your host and founder of PropSearch.com, which is India's first expert-based home buying platform to help home buyers like you to take informed and smart decisions. Today, I'm very happy to have with us architect Komal Talreja, who's considered one of Bangalore's best talents in the interior design field. Welcome to our initiative, Komal. I would love to hear a couple of words from you about Alchemy and what you're doing today. Uh, hi Ashish, uh, first of all, thank you so much for bringing us on this platform. Uh, I feel very honored to be a part of Pro Prop Search. Uh, so just to tell you a little bit about Alchemy, uh, I started this organization in 2013. Uh, before this, I was uh, consulting with the Coffee Day Group, helping them you know, build their retail brand as well. Uh, 2013, when I started this journey, uh, I think one of the most interesting things that I found is that India really, really needs some good designers. Uh, from then on, it's been nine years now. Uh, today, we do a lot of projects in the residential, the hospitality and uh, retail domain. Uh, one of our most uh, passionate areas is definitely the home design aspect. Uh, what we feel is that uh, the Indian consumer has been evolving a lot, you know, in terms of their taste, in terms of, you know, their travels. Uh, so when we, when they come to us and ask us that, you know, can you build dream homes for us? Uh, I think it definitely gives us a kick. So I think that's exactly what we've been doing now. And thank you, Ashish, once again. I mean, PropSearch has been definitely a great for the platform. We had a lot of conversations about this earlier as well. Right. Uh, jointly, we're, we're definitely taking the design industry to the next level. Awesome, Komal. I really look forward to that journey with you guys. Right. So uh, today, Komal will discuss a few aspects with respect to uh, interior design of homes, uh, also with respect to the design of homes itself, on what works, what doesn't work, what home buyers need to really watch out for uh, when they're looking at a flow plan, a master plan, right? So uh, let me start off with the first question. How important is design when you're buying a home? Like what kind of, uh, you know, value addition happens if you really do your due diligence when you're buying a home on design? Could you just shed some light on that, please? Sure. Uh, so Ashish, in my perspective, uh, I think it's extremely important to, uh, you know, look into the aspect of design, especially when a client is buying either an apartment or a home for himself as well, as villas. So uh, I, I'll tell you why it's, it's required. See, every, every family today or every customer today has very, very unique needs. Uh, what I'm seeing is that a lot of builders are building standard products, like, you know, everybody does 3 BHK anywhere between 1,800 to 6,000 square feet, 6,000 6, square feet. Yeah, yeah. so what, what I notice is that uh, for a home buyer, uh, I think the need to understand that is it a good fit based on his family requirements or based on his plans of uh, expansion, is this working? Uh, so that's when I think an architect or an interior designer comes in and evaluates the project and tells you that, look, uh, are you a family of three people? Are you a family of six? Is this the right fit? Is this the right sizes of utility, the bedrooms, all of these? Uh, definitely, you know, in my opinion, uh, design does play a very, very critical role. Uh, from, the, from the aspect of the uh, basic schematic layout of the place itself, uh, even from, from a perspective of what locality is it in, is it functioning in the right way, what, what surroundings are you living in? Now, when a home buyer is, uh, you know, uh, hunting for properties or scouting for properties, uh, what I feel is these aspects need to be delved into a lot deeper. Uh, I think a professional expertise uh, will support you in making the right decisions. Sure. So, yeah, I completely agree that, you know, I, I do believe in the aspect that design is the key today to uh, deciding your property. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Komal, now uh, design as such as uh, while, you know, people in the industry, uh, the architects, the real estate developers understand it really well. Uh, what are the things which people need to understand about the term design itself? Is it to do with the floor plan? Is it to do with, uh, you know, the layout uh, of different rooms? Uh, what are the key things they need to watch out for when they want to evaluate a house on design? Sure. Uh, so I'd like to uh, answer this question to you in different parts. Uh, see, one of the first things that I think clients should do, even before they get into the aspect of you know choosing their schematic layouts or whatever, understand uh, their lifestyle, understand what their needs are. Like today, you might be of a family of two people, but you know, uh, nuclear families today grow into maybe a four member. You have parents living with you. What sort of privacy aspects would you need? 
so I was actually evaluating your industry project for assets. I'm sorry, I'm deviating, but this is critical. Uh, so assets mark, one of these properties that we were looking at, uh, we realized that the builder itself has come up with a concept where they're doing a three and a half PHK, where there is a separate plug-in model of one of the bedrooms. Uh, I thought that was such a fantastic idea today uh, because as Indians today, we might be, you know, we still might want to live in joint families, but the fact that you also want your privacy, you want to have your own entertainment, uh, I think these are aspects, these are very subtle nuances. Uh, so what I would encourage clients to do is understand their own brief. Like, you know, uh, what would I want in, in my own house? Uh, and, and I think from there, one should probably take this base if possible to sit with a designer or an architect and, you know, maybe put this these pointers down saying that, look, this is what I need. I need an additional room. I need a study space. I need a work from home kind of an aspect. Just get clarity, a complete clarity in terms of how you are going to use this house for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, once you're clear about that, I think it's very important to probably go when you're starting for these properties to see if these things are fitting into your requirement. A simple thing is to begin with a basic schematic layout of the whole place. Uh, the second I would say is uh, one of the challenges I see you know, when I'm designing homes is that the kitchen and the utility and servants areas. I feel these are very, very constrained spaces and every buyer has a different need. Like you might find properties which are at 5,000, 6,000 square feet, but you know, uh, I see that the builders have probably provided smaller kitchens, uh, there's no thought process which has gone behind the servants in the utility area. And when we come in and design us, we struggle a lot with these spaces. So I would encourage home buyers to definitely evaluate the property on those aspects. Uh, also to understand that if they are you know, living in an existing place and they want to bring in furniture pieces from their older house, uh, is, is the new requirement, is it helping them fit what their existing products are and uh, also simple aspects like even light and ventilation uh, most people don't even look at aspects of is the house well ventilated uh, are the bathrooms you know requirements enough are the sizes of toilets enough i think these are fundamental aspects that as a client one should look at and uh, you know if need be i would even encourage them to actually talk to experts on over online platforms uh, spend time with them uh, you know, it will only help in making you make your journey much smoother rather than, you know, spending huge amounts of money and then trying to retrofit your requirements. Well, that's that's extremely insightful, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but see, Gobal, uh, most of the home buyers uh, don't have access to architects. They don't have access to the right inputs when it comes to design, right? And like you rightly mentioned, uh, people could always consult an architect on online platforms. But uh, what are the top three or four things they need to keep in mind so that their uh, home buying experience doesn't go for a toss, right? Just because of the way the home was designed. And see, end of the day, they're buying a home which is going to be with them for, you know, a lifetime, if not for, you know, uh, at least 10, 15, 20 years, right? So what should they really watch out for when it comes to uh, figuring out the right design for them? Uh, so ideally, Ashish, uh, what I would suggest is uh, the most important thing is just look at your basic schematic layout. Uh, you know, this is accessible to most real estate companies. Like if you're even going to a builder, uh, uh, more than just, uh, you know, getting that uh, uh, concept layout, I would suggest that we talk, you know, you, the client talks to the builders or talks with supports them and ensures that they get a detailed drawing of the place. Uh, and very simple things like ensuring that that information has sizes, uh, you know, a standard bedroom size. So, you know, you're looking at a 12 by 15. Now, if it's an undersized, undersized bedroom, which is of 8 by 10, I think the clients need to recognize this and understand that look, this is not going to fit. Uh, right. this second aspect, uh, which I feel there are a lot of oversights, is in terms of the electricals. Uh, so most builders, this is again out of experience I'm telling you, we've done you know close to about 50, 60 homes today. Uh, the second aspect that completely gets, gets missed out is that the electricals are underrated. Uh, so generally, you know, when I, I take the projects in as a designer, we have to leave out the electricals. Uh, this is something that I would encourage the clients to do. Please do a due diligence in terms of whether there is sufficient electrical points given on the project. Right. Uh, the third, I think, is a very, very important aspect is to ensure that your plumbing is done correctly. Uh, a lot of projects today are failing, failing because there's leakage issues, you know, uh, plumbing not being done correctly in toilets. Uh, I don't want to name the project, but you know, recently one of the very, very well-known builders, I had gone there to evaluate a specific property. And I realized that, uh, you know, one rain and the whole project is sabotaged because of leakages. 
Now imagine if somebody had to spend two to three crores on interiors and then you identify this. Uh, it's it's extremely painful the whole process. So one tip to home buyers is please look into simple aspects of electrical plumbing, uh, false ceiling heights. Uh, another challenge we're seeing in the industry is that these are being uh, definitely neglected today. Most builders, uh, just to get their FSIs in place, are looking at eight feet ceilings. Uh, you know the struggle that a designer or a end user goes through. Uh, in terms of planning lighting for these spaces is huge so i would you know suggest that you look into ceiling heights the minimum heights that i would recommend is at least a 9 feet uh, look at your schematic layouts understand simple things like how will the circulation in the house be do you have separate foyer areas do you have the right sides of living do you have right sizes for dinings and bedrooms uh, fundamentally if you look at these things right uh, i would say at least 60 70% of your problems uh, that you might foresee later will get eliminated in the initial stages of the how does someone really go about navigating this whole interior design market so how what is the most simple way that someone can actually find the right interior designer for themselves so to a client uh, the first suggestion that i'd like to give is understanding what interior design is uh, so the aspect of carpentry and uh, you know prefabricated manufacturing uh, such as modular kitchens and wardrobes is in my mind probably 20% of the actual exercise of what interior design means uh the big picture that i'd like to give to you so uh, interior design is a lot more about uh, the first step is the client understanding his own requirements uh today we have access a lot of access to the internet and we notice that you know it's so simple to just go on a pinterest or a google and find images and you know sit down and say this is the color i want this is the feel i want but is there somebody constantly telling you that look this is the right fit for your house this is not the right fit this is the right proportion this is not the right proportion i think more than that somebody even telling you that look it's like you going to a doctor and telling him that you know give me this medicine i think the first thing that you need to tell him is that look this is the disease I and mean, this is this is the symptoms that i have and let the doctor decide so uh, i think you go to an interior designer telling him your requirements and your needs not the solutions Now, if you approach a carpenter, you approach modular companies. Unfortunately, they're only trying to sell products to you. But I think the difference is when you hire a consultant, he's also telling you what's best for your own home. Uh, I would encourage you to definitely engage with somebody. The levels of the interior designer, of course, depends on the budget of the project. Uh, there are designers who are doing homes for very, very nominal fee, up to experts as well. Uh, I, I think with PropSource, you will have an area where you can you have access to a lot of people. that's something that the client can choose but uh, the whole process of actually not reaching out to vendors directly who are trying to sell products on their own uh, please go through consultants it will only make things make life better for you sure sure i think that makes sense uh, but the big question uh, which i guess is there on every home buyer's mind is uh, what could be the fees of consultant and uh, you know how do i know that uh, i'm not leaking money because a lot of people say that you know i had a x budget for interiors by the end of the project it was 2x i had a timeline of say 3 months by the end of the project it was 6 months so there there seems to be a trust deficit in the home buyer's mind when it comes to interiors and because of which they try and take control of the whole situation and get the interiors done by themselves uh, you know how, how does a home buyer again figure this out and you know get a trustworthy partner to actually uh, help them in this crucial decision sure uh, ashish to be honest with you these fears are very very real Uh, you know, yeah. uh, though I'm in the industry and we do work very differently, but uh, you know, I've heard of stories of our own clients who've not had some best of experience. Uh, again, I think here we have to probably have a breakthrough in the industry norm. Uh, but from a client's perspective, uh, I think one of the things I would encourage you to do is that uh, you know, when you're picking a designer at whichever level, whether it's for a two BHQ or whether it's for a large twenty thousand square feet space. Uh, if if a designer is coming to you from a thought process saying that I'm willing to work with you on a lump sum fee rather than a percentage kind of a thing, uh, I think that's the first parameter that he's working with you on an area of trust. Uh, what happens in the industry is that even whether it's carpenters, uh, you know, or it's designers, uh, people who are working on percentages, uh, from a client's perspective, please understand they're only trying to build and make make your project, uh, you know, more expensive. So if you can sieve through that process and try and engage with the designer and have this conversation, that look, we'd like you to come on board for your expertise and not for you know, you know, for a certain budget. That would help. That's one of the practices we bring forward to the table. So these are some simple things that one could look at uh, from a client's perspective. Please talk to your designer, understand how their approach is, what sort of a vendor base they have. Uh, are they doing the? Are they consulting for you, or are they suggesting that we do the project end to end? I know your first approach is to try and look for a partner who's doing projects end to end. That's the simplest 
solution. Uh, but again, that's an industry problem because what what a lot of firms are doing today is taking hundred percent advances and then under delivering. So if you have to save yourself from that, uh, stage your payments even with the designers. Uh, you know, set milestones. Uh, tell them that look, if you finish this work, I'll make the payments. Uh, you know, ideally, that's that's a two-way relationship because you're building it step by step and you're building it from an area of trust. Sure. I think that's a pretty candid uh, <laughs> point which you made about the industry and uh, unfortunately it is true and you know you have a lot of uh, cases where uh, people have gone uh, for litigations with their uh, interior design provider right because of such issues yes. so it's better to be uh, you know walk in with your eyes wide open instead of just thinking that you know once I outsource the whole thing my job is done and you know things will fall in place so that's great yeah yeah now Kobul coming back to uh, the core of interiors how should someone go about deciding the theme for their interiors? Uh, I think I would like to throw light on this through two aspects. Uh, the first being, uh, I think clients need to be a lot more aware in terms of what is their lifestyle. Uh, see, a lot of times we see that the clients are constantly comparing their homes to their neighbors, their relatives, something that they've seen. My best suggestion is that please do not do that. You know, your first step is to understand your own needs. So if it's a working couple, I'll give you an example. If it's a working couple, I would suggest that keep your house very minimalistic, simple, maintenance free. Uh, so, you know, you would pick a style which is not opulent, but which is more Scandinavian, more uh, Japanese and stuff like that. So you understand that look on a day-to-day -day basis, how am I going to maintain my house? You know, what, what do I have kids at home? Do I have this thing? You know, these. Uh, uh, I, I think the best way to approach this is please do introspection on, in, on your own lifestyle before you decide on the style itself. Uh, uh, you know, if the, the, the second aspect that I, I think I'd like to bring to light is the fact that uh, sometimes, right, I mean, on larger scale homes, you know, especially which are like opulent homes, like 6,000 to 10,000 square feet, uh, uh, we need to understand that what is the intent the client is trying to achieve through this. Uh, is it a home which he wants to showcase to a lot of people? Then the whole approach is very different. Then I would probably go for a more French classic, a more stylish home kind of thing. And do you have enough people, you know, uh, in the house who are going to maintain this home? So the sustainability factor of the home is the most important thing for me. I think that largely defines the style that you pick. Uh, even there, I would suggest that when you're having your initial conversation with your interior designer, please talk to them and, you know, rather than telling them that I want a house of this type, uh, give them your requirements, tell them this is what your, this is the way you live, this is the kind of family you have and allow them to work with you and uh, generally a good designer will always come back and tell you, look, this is the, this is the kind of style that will work for you. Uh, is it an eclectic Indian? So we like uh, we did a home in the stage uh, white meadows. Uh, the clients were from Punjab. I knew she liked bright colors. So we in fact developed a very very unique style for her. So if 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 an interior designer has creative freedom, right, they will always come back and suggest something very very unique for your home. This sounds a lot like going to a doctor and he kind of customizes the prescription basis your uh, whole you know body makeup, right? Absolutely. And I think. I think the importance of the <clears throat> excuse me the importance of uh, going to interior designers equivalent to going to a good doctor uh, you know because uh, you are investing for the next 20 years of your uh, you know earnings into this particular house and you might as well get a good uh, job done on the interiors. Uh, moving on from your Komal, uh, could you tell us a little about what are the common design mistakes which people do uh, you know while executing the job? Mm -hmm. How can it be remedied over uh, once the job is done? Or if someone already has a issue with the way their uh, home is designed or the interiors are done, how, how do they go about fixing the design flaws in it? Is there any recourse for that? <laughs> uh, so, well, there is no straightforward uh, listing. But uh, yeah, maybe I can just so, throw some light into uh, aspects where uh, I feel that clients are making some common mistakes. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is highly neglected is like your kitchen area, utility area and service quarters area. Uh, see, uh, looking at Indians, right, those uh, those are very, very primary spaces that uh, we use ex extensively. Uh, very interesting things that we always want European kitchens. Uh, but, you know, we don't understand that what, what is the materiality of a European kitchen versus Indian needs. Uh, kitchen counters, you know, we're always looking at materials like Korean and quartz, which are beautiful to look at. But are they working in our conditions? That's something one needs to evaluate. Like for us, haldi and, you know, doing tarpas is such a way of life. Uh, fundamental aspects neglected. So uh, again, I'm encouraging home buyers, please understand your needs. You know, 
are you a vegetarian are you non vegetarian what kind of cooking do you do what counters will work for you what kind of tiles work for you even utility spaces i think they're very very undermined both from the builders and designers and so as a home buyer the first thing that i think you should even look at is that are these utility spaces sufficient can you place dishwashers can you place washing machines where do your janitors go in you know these are all practical things one looks at i mean for a designer he might just go away with a beautiful photo shoot of your house but you're living it uh, uh, we encourage our home users saying that please look into these aspects because we want the home for, you know to look the way it is in photographs even the way it's physically kept as well we want to ensure that the housewife has these spaces where she doesn't have to worry about deep planning i think a lot of it is about throwing light on space utilization Uh, if one can look into these aspects i think a lot of mistakes can definitely be avoided uh, simple things that i see is that even when we are taking up existing homes from a builder sometimes we end up changing flooring uh, are the slopes done correctly this is a huge mistake that happens in the industry uh, these are oversights that one look at uh, leakages plumbing problems see these are things that you will not be able to resolve at a later date but if you don't buy a painting and you add it later you can still get away with that So I would say go back to the basics. Look at fundamentals of plumbing and electrical. Invest money on designers. Invest money on spending on the right electricals and plumbing agencies. Do not compromise on that. Even if it means about you know picking a fabric which is a little more cost effective and all of that. Please invest in these fundamentals because you will never be able to change. Even with flooring, pick floors which are like a little more anti-skid for toilets. Even when you're doing your living room floors, ensure that spacers are given. So these are small things that you know you don't have to have a designer for that. You know these are fundamentals that one can look at and try and ensure that you know whichever contractor you hire, you know for smaller homes, please look into these needs and avoid making these mistakes. Uh, one very important thing is again uh, as I had mentioned earlier as well, false ceiling heights. Please ensure that whichever property you pick up has a minimum of eight and a half feet ceiling heights. Uh, uh, common mistakes that happen. You're struggling later with trying to you know add artificial lighting. Avoid these things. So yeah, these are these are the basics that one need needs to look at. So Komal, how important uh, a role does sustainability play in the interior design of a home? Uh, is it something which only the developer should look out for, or do you think interior designers can also really enhance the sustainability of a particular home? Sure. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I think the word sustainability is a little overrated uh, as well. You know, all of us talk about sustainability. Uh, in our practice, every day we are questioning what is sustainability. What does it mean? Does it mean ethical practices? Uh, I don't have the right answer, but what I can definitely tell you is that the little things that you can do. Uh, in terms of trying to, uh, you know, whatever you do at your home, build homes which are a little more timeless. Uh, you know, something that you've developed now uh, should stay with you for the next ten years, is what I would say. See, as designers, right, we kind of over, we we also tend to overdo homes as well. Uh, I think just keeping it right, uh, you know, is I, I think in my mind the most sustainable aspect of a home. The other areas one could look at is aspects of what kind of paints you choose. Are the paints organic? Are they, you know, are they using chemicals to do it? You know, how are the manufacturing processes? So we go a little beyond this. Uh, we also like if you're working with manufacturers, we try and delve a little deeper and understand that what sort of practices are they doing? Are they using any duty chemicals again? So for example, there's a finish called Juco, which is done in a, a spray booth area. Now imagine the kind of damages it's doing to the people who are uh, working behind the scenes. So we refrain from, you know, using such practices. Uh, these are the little things I think, uh, you know, as Alchemy, we do to support the industry. But from a client's perspective, if you can do homes which are a little more timeless, I think you're doing your bit in the industry. Well, that's that's very uh, interesting for a home buyer. Uh, and now coming to the real, the most important question, uh, Komal, is could you just uh, shed some light on what should be the typical budget for someone uh, as they go about planning their interiors? If you could give a thumb rule with respect to, uh, should it be a percentage of the property value, or is there something else which uh, can help someone decide on it? Sure. Uh, so Ashish, to answer this question, uh, so see, uh, I don't think there is a limit to which what you can spend today on interiors. It's a very, very varied field. Uh, somebody who who buys a home which is of one year can spend anywhere from ten lakhs, it can go up to forty lakhs as well. Uh, it all depends on the materials that you're choosing. Uh, there are varied products in the market, from laminates to veneers to multiple things. 
uh, I think the client probably should, you know, understand that look, this is this is the kind of uh, budget he wants to spend on the project, and then decide. But one suggestion that I'd like to give is, is uh, whatever your budgets are, or whatever you want to spend, uh, it's extremely important that you choose the right people that you work. With. Uh, there are designers today who are available for very very low prices and higher. Similar, similarly, there are carpenters and modular companies that which are come with varied ranges. It is completely dependent on the client. Uh, but please ensure that whatever your budget sir whatever level you work with you're just working with the right trusted people in the industry well, i think that's a fair enough uh, answer for a complex question like this uh, and i think that brings me uh, to the end of my questions uh, if you have any more tips for home buyers when it comes to interiors or design love to hear uh, from you uh well i think we've covered most uh, aspects ashish uh, i i think the i would like to just leave the buyers with uh, uh, one very simple thought that whether you hire a designer you don't hire a designer whatever your approach is be very very clear about your own design brief in terms of what you're looking for uh, evaluate your lifestyles understand you know that this is where you're coming from understand your needs in terms of are you living in a joint family are you a nuclear family are you working non working Uh, also f- do a little bit of groundwork yourself in the industry like i would say that you know go to a few experts uh, go out in the market look at vendors uh, you will you will also open yourself up to a lot of new trends which are in the industry uh, constantly even when you are working with your designer please be open you know reach out to as many people as many vendors as you can i think design or design or no design it is a joint effort to build a home today uh please please definitely you know spend time you know as a family spend time understanding your own lifestyle sure sure no that's great uh, thanks a lot for your time komal uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you thank look you. forward to connecting with you again on a new topic <laughs> definitely ashish thank you thank you